is a recording of the talk given by Frank Drake on Project Ozma in April 1960, while Project Ozma actually was going on at Green Bank. I think I'm here to provide the comic relief to this shindig. <laughs> the question as to whether there is intelligent life elsewhere in space has long fascinated people, but has been properly left to the science fiction writers and uh, other non-scientific groups uh, simply because our technology was not capable of detecting any reasonable manifestation that could be expected from other civilized communities in space. Uh, so this is our observatory's very first radio telescope. It was finished in 1959. The very next year it was made pretty famous by a young astronomer at the time named Dr. Frank Drake. He used this to perform the first ever search for extraterrestrial intelligence. That program was called OSMA. He picked the name to pay homage to uh, Frank L. Baum's series The Wizard of Oz and refers to Princess Ozma, the rightful ruler of the land of Oz. Now because of the continuous formation of stars, uh, there should be a continuous evolution and development of intelligence systems and we should find intelligence systems, or we should find life uh, forms on planets scattered roughly uniformly along this half system. So is there intelligent life beyond our planet? One way of framing that question is by using the famous Drake Equation. In 1961, as he prepared for the symposium for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and in fact it was delivered for the first time to eminent scientific minds uh, in our Drake Lounge just across the street. In which case there are intelligent communities in space, and we ask how can we detect them? Well, we will be looking for communications where the uh, information is being transferred over long distances, and this implies narrow band transmissions. Now, Frank Drake did that first study here in April of 1960 with this very telescope. He used to arrive at four o'clock in the morning uh, to set up his instrumentation, and that did involve working with uh, receivers and back-end receivers inside of this very control room, and actually with equipment at the very tip top of the telescope that you see. To access it, though, at the time, we would have had to tilt the entire structure over to the side, and he would have to climb into a lift to be raised up to reach that instrumentation. At that point, he would have to climb into a structure about as big is a trash can and spend about 45 minutes fine-tuning one of the world's first parametric amplifiers and that's just to set up for the study. This was a four-month study and it was the first ever search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Uh, one other question that is, is our technology capable of making such detections and there's only time enough to say there is. Uh, Project Breakthrough Listen was announced. We were also excited uh, to be once again part of the future of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence here. We realized how much of that history and how we had participated in the search over the years and how fitting it was for this search to come right back home to Green Bank where it originally started in 1960. And so the field of SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, came into being. I remember the first day of the search, we pointed our telescope at the, actually the second target, which was the star Epsilon Eridni, at one of the nearest of the sun-like stars that might have planets. We didn't know at the time whether it did or not. And as soon as we pointed the telescope, we heard a signal. And I was astonished, we were all astonished, because we wondered, can it really be this easy? Search is now in uh, progress at Green Bank. We are looking at four stars, Tau and Epsilon Eridani, which are the nearest twins to the sun, and two other stars, Wolf 359 and uh, WX Ursi Majoris as control stars. So we have a sound project, but what is required is the use of very expensive equipment and a great deal of time. There's a good possibility that sometime in the future, and we don't know how long that will be, maybe 100 years, maybe next week, this search will be successful. <laughs>